All right. All right. Um, we are officially live with my guy, Prince Amukamara. Got his Wi-Fi figured out, it looks like. Uh, another another edition of uh, Win Daily Sports and uh, an Athletes Corner. Um, Elijah Wilkinson, welcome, dude. Thank you so much for making time. I know we had a little mix-up this morning, dude, but uh, we, we really appreciate your time, dude. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. You know, I, we were saying a little bit earlier, you know, we've had we've had some veterans on. We've had some guys who were, you know, either recently exited from the league or, or taking a look at, at, um, at what their life looks like after football, getting pretty close. You're the youngest guy we've had on. Um, and when we talk about, you know, win daily, what we're trying to do here and, and, and talk about how athletes view money, how they view their career, you know, what happens afterwards. I'm, I'm excited to hear about your perspective. Um, but just to give the, the audience a little bit of a background, uh, officially signed with the uh, the Denver Broncos, undrafted as you came out of college, uh, maybe battled a, a couple injuries here and there, practice squad, said, said fuck it, I'm going to keep grinding it out, made the roster, and uh, and right now officially with, uh, with the Chicago Bears. Yep, yeah, that's right, man. I mean, it's all what the league is about, man, adversity and, you know, getting over those hurdles that uh, life throws at you, you know. So, uh, I mean, it's a part of the game, injuries and whatnot. Um, so you just got to take the punches and roll with it, you know? Yeah, it, it's a place that Prince is very familiar with. <laughs> what, taking the punches and rolling with it or Chicago? Well, both, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, it's so funny. I, I first heard that term, Floyd. Floyd said that, and I, I guess it's a boxing term, but yeah, Floyd always says like, you know, you take you take the the bad with the good and the good with the bad. But um, yeah, it's like you said. I mean, being undrafted, like, and I saw you're from UMass. That reminds me of my boy Cruz, Victor Cruz. I'm sure you heard of him. Mm -hmm. uh, UMass finest or whatever UMass is like one of the greatest things to come out of UMass since you I mean you're now it Elijah but um how how was it there can you talk about your experience there um UMass was uh <laughs> quite the oh, sure. if you have to have it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah he coughed a little bit <laughs> nah, it seemed like it's Juco it was oh, I mean it was, it was quite the school you know um just a different experience, you know, uh, the Massachusetts cold, that was a whole different world. I mean, people say, you know, you're from Philly, you should understand the cold, but like up there, it's, it's way different, you know? Um, that's one aspect. Another aspect is just, you know, a very small town in the middle of nowhere. It's kind of Amherst, Massachusetts is kind of in the middle of nowhere a little bit. Um, and us just being a, a lower level division one school, you know, it was kind of, you know, tough, you know, having our games at Gillette and not a lot of students would come or, you know, kind of kind of just like having that dynamic of a year. We're playing big schools, CU, you know, uh, Mississippi State, you know, all these kind of schools. But like we're really not having that much of like a fan base come. So it was kind of weird. You know what I mean? But we kind of moved on to campus <clears throat> my third year or second year and it got a little bit better, but we still weren't, you know, our record didn't hold hold true, and you know fans would come tailgate and do whatever, and then just go back to campus and go go live their life, you know, and not come to the game. So it was yep. a different uh, dynamic than what you know most Division One players are used to, you know. Prince made a joke that it's like you know make it sound like a JUCO, and obviously it's not. But do you feel like the dynamic, like I, I guess for me when I look like outsider looking in. If you're playing for, you know, a big time D1, right, Alabama, any, anything in the SEC, one of those schools, it seems like, you know, there, there, it, there's a team, right? You're, you're playing with your team. When you're at a smaller school like that and your goal is to take the next step is to get to the league, do you feel like it's less of a team atmosphere? And you're like, I, I got to get mine in and, and I'm doing what's best for me. And it's very hard to think that way because, you know, I'm not an I guy. I'm not somebody who's only me, 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 you know, but like at that point, in the point in our season where we were, you know, junior year or even going into my senior season, um, you know, you kind of have to take it that way and say, you know, yeah. I got to do what's best for me. I have to, you, you know, it, it is what it is because realistically, not everybody, you know, like I said, a lower level division one school, not everybody is, is on that track. Not everybody is wanting to go to the NFL. It's sad enough to say, but like usually when Division One players come and play football, that's their end goal. They want to, you know, fit, go to the NFL or keep going or, you know, whatever. they're very passionate about football. But in our case, it was not, you know, not everybody on uh, the team was like that, you know, in most cases. Mm. 
Prince, you had a different experience, right? You, you were you were at, at Nebraska. You were highly touted. Do you feel like it was kind of the same, or do you feel like it was more of a team dynamic over there? Man, um, I, I think college was everything I I thought it was and more. I mean, I mean, growing up, I had I had American Pie, I had Harold and Kumar, like I had those type of shows. So <laughs> that type of experience, <laughs> that type of experience was that in college. And then football wise, like when I committed to Nebraska, I didn't know where Nebraska was on the map. I thought, like I thought the coach was Jim Trestle, who was Ohio State's coach, because I I've, I've never really heard about um, Nebraska. And then when I got there, I realized like, wow, like this is football. Like the whole, the whole town. Like I heard Nebraska. I heard Lincoln is the third largest city in the state of Nebraska when um, when it's game day. Like everybody just floods there. Wow. Everybody just goes there. And on my recruiting visit, people had my jersey in the stands and stuff like that. It was, yeah, it was, it was crazy. And I feel like Nebraska kind of helped prep me for the league in like stardom and notoriety wise, because that's all there was in Nebraska. Like we were the guys and stuff like that. So being in that fishbowl, um, trying to have a squeaky clean, you know, reputation and record because of who you are. I mean, I was prepped uh, by Nebraska. So, I mean, my time there was 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 awesome. I mean, it's interesting, like the, the, the differences between, you know, your experience, Elijah, your experience. Um, what, I guess based on that, like what was your transition like going into the league, right? Undrafted, like Prince is the first rounder, that, that experience is different. Yeah. And, and then part of that's like, Dude, what keeps you motivated, man? You know, going to UMass, maybe not having that team thing, being undrafted. Like, how did you like, keep find yourself keep going? You know, to kind of piggyback off of that, not to say that, you know, I said what I said about UMass before, but, I mean, I did have a, a pretty good coach who came from the NFL. His name is Mark Whipple. He now coaches mm -hmm. for the Pitt, uh, University of Pitt. Um, but, you know, we were in a pro-style system. You know, we ran that, and it's kind of – our protections were the same. Our blocking was the same. So when I got to the league, it was kind of like, oh, okay, like, I know this. Like, this is fine. Yeah. You know, versus people who were in Big 12 or Big 10, you know, or whatever. And oh, wow. all they do is run spread and, you know, and run little outside zones and pitch the ball. Like, they didn't really know, you know, what the blocking rules were, what the basis of the protection was and, like, all that. So I felt like I was ahead of the curve on kind of that aspect. Um, but the transition was, I mean, different, you know, like everybody, it was more team, like, <laughs> you know, it was more, everybody had the same goal. We're all, you know, we're working out. Everybody's, you know, pushing themselves to the limit. You know, it was like, you know, it felt, you felt that team aspect to it. Now being in the undrafted role, you know, on the other hand, um, was just different because like, I can remember my first time, uh, like when while well, we, we got there, you know, we're there a few days before the vets report and stuff and OTAs. And uh, the thing is, when you when you come in, and you're in the first team meeting, like all the vets go, you know, you, you the rookies have to introduce themselves. So you stand up and you go around the room. So they're going around the room. <laughs> first round, first round I know what he's talking about. And, um, you know, Name school was, signing bonus. Hey, you know, yeah, name, signing, bonus, school, you know, whatever. So it was kind of embarrassing to me because I, this was what I could do, you know, and look what, yeah. look what that turned out to be, you know, five years mm -hmm. later. So was, was there a moment during your first year, first couple of years where like, there was that one moment where you're like, dude, I got this, like, I can do this. Honestly, because you never know. I mean, the, the NFL is just like hot and cold and you know they can give you a smile but they go up to the office and they could be talking shit about you you know and yeah. I mean, you really don't know you know what's really going on so i would be you know especially being undrafted no sign bonus no nothing like we would come in in the morning i just like kind of creep around like see if my name plate damn like, wow like, like see if my name plate still on my locker like you know what i mean make sure because people be getting cut left and this is before they did the one cut thing and, and all of that so, like, you know, people will be getting cut left and right. So I would be coming in in the morning. You know, we got workouts at 7 a.m. or whatever. It's 6, 6 o'clock, 6.30. And I'm creeping in, about to change into my stuff. And I come around. I'm like, oh, all right, I'm there. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All right, cool. But yeah, that's 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 savage. You walk in, you just shit, your shit's out of the locker. That's oh, it? Oh, man. Like, it, it's so, it is so crazy, man. Just, like, that feeling of that. But, you know, it's very on edge, you know, when you're, especially yeah. under 
especially being a rookie on top of undrafted, you know, the expectations is high. Like, you know, you got to be there five minutes early for lift and this and that. It's, it's just like, it's just like that dynamic of just not being laxed. And I feel like yeah. if you are drafted, like, yeah, you're not laxed and there's still pressure on you, but it's like, I'm good for at least, at least this year. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's that's like, why uh, I get you that. That urgency is different from for an undrafted and a, a drafted person. Even, but also like, but the pressure is different too because first, second, third rounder, like they want to see you got to make the people who picked you look good. And if you don't make them look good, it's like all right. As soon as your guarantees are up, or 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 oh. as soon as as soon as your performance goes low or your character is terrible, you are out of there. I had a coach told me he said. Um, they're, you're tolerable until until replaceable. So if as long as we can tolerate you, as long as you're still pr producing, as soon as that's done, we're replacing you. Like you're 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 out of there. And you see, like I remember my, my draft year, I seen a dude get drafted first round and then get cut. Get drafted first round and then and then get cut. Wow. Yeah, and it's and think about how bad or just. Not how bad, but just how, like what what someone could have done for them to say, all right, this ten twelve million dollars will just count it as a wash. Like we we can be associated with the mm. program. Like we need them out of there and stuff like that. And and a, just like what you said, like I have a story with the the Raiders. Man, when I was with the Raiders last year, Gruden, I knew Gruden wasn't wasn't feeling me or whatever. Like and. And this is like the first time I've ever talked about this publicly. But Gruden, I remember Gruden was like, it was the first time we put on the silver and black jerseys. We went in the stadium and we pra and we we had like our scrimmage. And Gruden was like, like, you look good in that jersey. How you feel? You look good and stuff. And I had my helmet on, but I was looking at him through through like the side of my eyes, like, man, what is this man on? What is he talking about? Like, I know, bro, next day, I didn't even get into I got into the building, boom. I had, they call him the Grim Reaper. Like, mm. so the dude was there and he was like, hey, Prince, um, come meet a Mayox office. And I was like, what? And usually they, they'll say, hey, do you have your playbook or whatever, or your iPad? He didn't say that. So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking all positives. Like, maybe they want to extend me. Shit. Or, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking that, Listen, I just got there. I'm thinking the craziest thing. Like, what? What does he call me? Right. Call me to his office for? So, um, and one thing I respect about Mayock is like, as soon as I get in there, they gonna like keep the it. first, the first two, the first thirty seconds, he he tells them like, hey, we're gonna release you and stuff like that. So he's not building, 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 building. Then like, hey, Prince, we're gonna release you. But hey, I wanna preach. I appreciate you. And it's like, and I've seen it so many times on Hard Knocks. I've seen it so many times in person, but when it happens to you, it's just different. It's like, oh my gosh, like wow. And yeah, and you, yeah. And so when Elijah, when you're saying like they they're loving you up in, in in person, and then behind behind closed doors, they're thinking about they're thinking about trading you. Like that's real. Gosh, I still end. And to this day, that whole season, as soon as I got released from there, the same thing I did with the Bears, I I was watching. I right, these boys are gonna get burnt. Like that's. Like, <laughs> like, like, I wanted them to go zero and sixteen, man. <laughs> of course, you, of course, you want your boys to do good, but that's how I was with the Bears. Like it's just like I want them to feel like they made a terrible decision, whether whether I was the reason or not. Like, but still, it. it my wife says I'm very revengeful or whatever, but yeah, like if if you hurt me, I want you to feel some type of pain too. Yeah. And so if your team does does terrible, all right, good. That that, that makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we, we we got a couple a couple of bad experiences, but Elijah, you, you, you signed a contract recently, so you're on the other side of that at least right now, right? Yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, a, a lot of this show is talking about you know how guys enter the league, how they view their finances and, you know, things they're interested in, whether, you know, and again, we're just talking about it now, but if they're in the startups, if they're in investing and how they kind of view money, so many of the veterans have said, hey, I didn't really understand my money until contract number two or three or, or as I kind of get closer to exiting the league. Um, you know, when you signed that contract, you know, kind of what went through your mind from, you know, from a money standpoint, from like, hey, does this, 
Did this change your life? Did you go buy, you know, did you go buy new car and chains and, and jewelry or, you know, what, what did that look like for you? Uh, I, I went through the, the chains and cars and all that, you know, my, <laughs> my first couple of years. Um, so I'm not really on that anymore. But um, this year was different for me because. Hold on. You I, ain't into that anymore because you ain't got no more bread. Or you ain't oh. into that anymore? Cause you. Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, I've been, I gotta had to ask. Ah, I, I've been there, done that. You know what I mean? So like, you know, I got some jewels. I got a couple of chains. You know, I, I had a little chain made when I got here. You know, for whatever. <laughs> but um, it's not about that no more. You know, especially with having right. a baby, and you know, especially getting older. It's my fifth year. Um, I, I had rented the whole time while I was in Denver. You know, with that mentality of being scared of, of actually purchasing something and you know that then the next day oh hey come up to come up to the office you know what you call needs to talk to you, you know, whatever so i kind of just was you know living on eggshells you know for the last four years and you know me signing this deal here um not only gave me a little bit of security but also gave me uh you know just a little bit of more confidence and made me feel like you know what like we ain't renting this year like let's let's really put something down and let's mm -hmm. let's uh, let, let's start. Let's get something under our name. You know, we're we're married now. You know, we got a we got a, we got a kid. You know, let's get something under our name. Let, let's start building a little equity. You know, with ourselves, and you know, start start something. You know, you got to start somewhere. You know what I mean? So, um, I actually did buy a house um, when I when I signed here, and uh, you know, I thought that that was the right move because when we were looking looking around to uh, you know rent or whatever around here. You know, the townhouse, I got a dog and, you know, we got a baby now. And even we had a townhouse in Denver and it was a little tight to begin with. Whenever my family comes in or whatever, like it's tight. So we were like, we can't do that no more. So we're looking around the rent and it's like, yo, like I'm going to be spending for the 12 month lease, you know, 60, 70 grand. Like it don't make no sense to do that when yeah. you get a house and put down an extra 10 or 15 and, and you could, you could have a mortgage. Like, you know what I mean? So. Yeah it made sense to me, you know, to just go ahead and get the crib, you know? So that's what we wound up doing. And I think that, uh, you know, that me signing that deal kind of gave me a little bit more security, um, in where I'm at, you know? Um, so you get to Chicago, you got the deal, you got your feet in the ground, you know, you got, you got, you got a place for your, for your girl and your little girl and your family. Um, I know the camp's coming up pretty soon, and during this time, you guys are just, you guys are crushed, right? It's football all day, every day, the only thing you think about. Um, but as you take a look at, you know, the kind of the, the rest of your life, have you given thought to some of the things that, you know, you might be interested in, whether it be now, whether it be startups, whether it be buying homes? Like, from a business side, have you begun to kind of think about that a little bit? Yeah, I actually um, keep in touch with some of the people that I used to play with. One of them is Cyrus Quanjo. He was on the Broncos with me for a little while. And um, they're part of a, a group, actually, with the NFLPA that does, um, you know, real estate, house flipping, um, rehabs, all of that. So, like, I've been following him, and he's even, you know, opened it up enough to, you know, give me his number and, you know, let me know how projects are going and this and that. And he's like, hey, listen, like, if you ever want to get into this, like, you know, I recommend you come shadow me for a week or two and just come on the jobs and just come check it out and see if it's something that you would want to do. Um, you can't just not that you can't just jump in and do it, but it's it helps to like have some see somebody do it and then, you know, kind of take notes and then you can go about it and do your own project, you know. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool, you know, ex especially for the PA to have a, you know, kind of something like that to include players who are retired and to get you into something. Cause that's something that I am interested in is real estate and, you know, finance and stuff like that. And just passive income, you know, in a sense. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think, uh, Justin Forsett called it mailbox money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Walk yeah. out. Oh, here's a check here. Bro. Yeah. 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 You know, right. you know? Um, so yeah, that's something that I'm interested in. Um, I think that, you know, the, the sky's the limit, especially with, you know, our, our careers, like, you know, our, yeah. that we have, you know, there's plenty, plenty of things you could do. I could coach, I could, you know, go work a job, but nine to five, like I, I can go do anything, you know? Yeah. So really the sky's the limit. Um, but I did have a business in, uh, Denver. I had a barbershop for two years. Nice. Um, which was cool. Unfortunately, we had to close it down since we're out of state now. Um, you know, just being the owner of it and not being in town and around is kind of hard to deal with, you know, especially, you know, there's been so many problems that pop up 
that I'm, you know, 20 minutes from the shop. So I could just pop on down there. Like, it's not the same, you know, thing now that I'm in Chicago, you know, so I can't just be like, oh, okay, this happened. Like after practice, I'll be down there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can't do that. So we had to have a conversation about it and uh, wound up, you know, just having to cut ties and having to close the business. Um, but it is what it is. It was a learning experience. I'm glad that I did it. You know, I could, that's, that's now on my resume, you know, as a business owner and, and all of that. And it, it was cool. I mean, you live and you learn, you learn how to, how to deal with people, how to make people, um, you know, how people work, you know what I mean? So I think, uh, I think it was a, it was, it was a really good experience for me. I got to give back to the community, hold events and free haircuts. And especially during the pandemic, you know, free haircuts for first responders, giving kids free haircuts, um, I was down there grilling up if you, I think it's on my Instagram, but like, you know, I'd come out there on Saturdays and like, we, we had the radio station out and I'd go buy a bunch of food at Costco and stuff and just, you know, be flipping burgers and dogs and, you know, for homeless kids, anybody like you want, you hungry, come on, walk by and, you know, get whatever. Like it was cool, you know, to be able to do that. Like I, I'm very appreciative that, you know, I had that time, you know, to be able to do that and to give back, you know? So that's right. It was, it was cool, man. So I, I think I, I got my foot in a little bit, you know, into, you know, a little bit of the business side. I got my foot into a little bit of the investment side, a little Bitcoin, a little this and that. Um, mm. Stocks, if I have a financial advisor who handles that. But I have my own personal profile that I play around with, um, you know. So I think I got my foot into a little, a, a few avenues, you know what I mean? So I think it's a I love that. for sure um, where I'm at. But like I said, the sky's the limit. It could, it could be even higher, you know. So that that's that's awesome. Elijah, man. It, it's funny. Oh, go ahead, Prince. Elijah. So in in the locker room, like you were talking about, how the NFLPA, um, your boy Cyrus, hooks you up with, or just tells you like what's going on, informs you on the real estate side. But in the locker room, like, is there any deal flow in in that conversation? Like, do you get to hear what like Vaughn was doing, um, like in in Denver, like dudes? Do dudes talk about that? Yeah, dudes definitely talk about that, but it's not really the talk of the locker room like how it should be. You know what I mean? Like, I think it mm. should be way more than what it is. Like, and I think that's something that, you know, me getting here to Chicago and expecting the Chicago has a, has a few young guys, you know, especially like in my little section in the locker room. Um, so, you know, I always share with them, oh, they're like, oh, what you doing? Like, oh, you bought the house. Like, what you what you doing to the house? Like, you doing this, that, and the right. third um, and I'm explaining to them what I'm doing. You know, I'll be talking to them about Bitcoin, about stocks and stuff like that. But I think it's cool to be able to, like, see a second year guy or whatever, because I used to be in that second year guy's shoes and to be able to share my experiences and what I'm actually doing um, with them is pretty cool, cool to see. And like them, like, oh, OK, yeah, like they don't even have a financial advisor yet. Like, you know what I mean? Like they haven't reached that point. So they, you know, they need, I was like, hey, listen, you know, you might need to <laughs> have somebody <laughs> to, to tell you what to do with that money. Don't, you know, don't do it your own way and mess it up, you know, right. but, you know, anybody can control their own finances and stuff, but it's better to have a professional um, that's actually in that line of work and someone who you trust and, you know, that can point you in the right, right direction. Because when, you know, when I turned 50, you know, 55, 60, you, you turn around and that's, you, you did the right thing, you know, you're going to be pretty happy with yourself, you know, at the end of the day, you know? So um, I think it's pretty cool to be able to share that with some of the young teammates in my, in my section in the locker room, but back uh, in the it was not that, you know, they did not, I mean, a few people, you know, talk about what they're doing outside of football and this and that, but it wasn't really like what, what it could be. And I'm like, we all making right. money in here, you know, and, right. and this, why can't we come together, like come together and, and let's do this, you know, like, but, you know, everybody goes their own way and, you know, has their own what they're doing with their money and whatever. So I'm not going to force you. I'm going to make sure I'm good. But I ain't going right. to force you. <laughs> you know what I mean, like either you're going to trust me and we're going to do something together or we we just going to be teammates. And that, that's going to be that. I don't got a problem with either or. Right. Uh, Elijah, you mentioned it a couple of times, like, you know, having someone you know to, to be able to speak to that's maybe gone through it before or, or that's in the business you want to be in. Um when people ask me about business all the time, I tell them it's so important to get like to have a mentor, someone that like gives a shit about you, knows what they're doing, is interested in the space, and, and, and is willing to you know, kind of bring you on these projects. Um, you know, whether whether it was growing up or football or now, like is it, in France? I don't know if I asked you this either, but you know, was there someone or is there someone that like, is that person for you, whether it be football or or, or business? 
Um, I'd say the person for me in my life, like as like sort of a mentor was like my grandfather, you know, he was pretty smart with his money when he was coming up. He was an executive for, uh, Sunoco oil way back or sun oil way back when they were in the 80s, seventies. Um, but you know, he kind of taught me what I know about saving money and about finding stocks, this and that. Um, but outside of that, you know, it was kind of my rookie year, um, Ron Leary, he came from uh, the Dallas Cowboys. He played offensive guard, um, and it was his, he signed a deal here for some good money in Denver. And, you know, he kind of showed me the lay of the land, you know what I mean, and what it meant to really have camaraderie as an offensive line and what it meant to really that, – that bond between you guys um, is really what, you know, what creates that. And what I loved about him is that he was an undrafted player as well, and he had some issues. Yeah his first and second practice it's kind of the same journey as me right the squad and you know whatever um so it was so cool to see like him actually get that big deal and like his family is good now and you know for him to be able to pass that down and like show people the way you know he's over on thursdays and have you know the ivy lady there have the stretch guy there you know just have food and stuff for everybody like and it wouldn't be like he's not asking for a dime. Like he's like, this is like what this is what you're supposed to do. Like you're supposed to give back like to to yeah. your teammates. Like so y'all all are healthy for something. Y'all all eating and y'all all good. You know what I mean? But like him showing me that, like kind of showed me the way. And it was like, man, like I signed that big day, I'm gonna do that. You, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> kind of you know, it made it made me, you know, want to do that and want to kind of show the way for, you know, these younger guys, you know. Prince, was it was there somebody for you coming up that you had that you look up to that way? Yeah, I think I've, I have I have a similar um, story as like Elijah. I mean, when I was in New York, I had OGs, OGs like Brandon Jacobs. Like had, I had Eli, I had uh, Justin Tuck. And just seeing how and my boy like and in my position group, I had a guy by the name of Corey Webster and, and Aaron Ross and. Um, man, there's there's so many do Antrell Roll and stuff like that, and Deion sure. Grant, and just seeing how they moved, like they always made sure. Like I, I was always a guy who didn't really like, like I'd always do the bare minimum for parents. So if I had to wear a suit, it'll be like non-fitted suit, like whatever, white socks, like just just didn't care, <laughs> just. Just because I'm thinking we traveling, I want to be comfortable and and such and such. But these dudes always made it important, like, um, to collect business cards when they when they met people. Like Justin Tuck really moved him and Cruz probably moved the best in the city um, that that I've seen. Like always got business cards cards was always um, well well respected. Spoke to the media well. Was very articulate and. Um, just mm -hmm. watching them and then even in the locker room watching them just like stretching cold tub hot tub after practice even if they weren't hurt like i'm thinking you only do extra stuff when you hurt they were doing um preventative maintenance so they don't get hurt and stuff like that or they or they don't get hurt as bad and then so watching them and just taking a little piece everywhere i went and then also working out in the off season like i worked out i worked out at, at this spot called um proactive sports performance and I got to work out with Clay, Clay Matthews, Aaron Rodgers, and I got to I got to see how those guys moved also. And so you're just picking and choosing like what works for you and um and then you just really just add it to add it to your um your regimen. All right Elijah, um you've got some mentorship. You're mentoring some people now which is really cool. Um That's awesome. It, yeah, which, which is which is really cool. Um, and it sounds like you know you you've kind of gotten past that phase of hey, I need the <clears throat> I need the shiny stuff. Like now, I want to start investing and saving and stuff. <clears throat> uh, we ask this question all the time. Uh, it's one of my favorite ones. We get some great answers. Um, you know, we talk about what motivates you, what kept you going. The 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 name of the of the of the show is called Win Daily. Um, you know, how do you wake up every morning? What's your version of winning every day? What does that mean to you? Um, my version of winning every day is just attacking it. You know what I mean? Um, like you said, I mean, I, I kind of picked that up from, you know, the vets and stuff like get, getting in the hot tub and warming yourself up, you know, rolling out, stretching, even before you get to the field and do stretch and all that, like you got to like warm yourself up. Like you're getting older now, you know, you got to start the engine a little earlier, you know, let it sit outside mm -hmm. and warm up. So 
you know, just those little keys and, you know, kind of starting to, you know, wake up, get there, you know, a little bit early. Don't don't come in, you know, five minutes before meeting, like, like get there and eat breakfast and, you know, kind of get there, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> work. you're not coming to hurry up and rush in there and go to the meeting, you know, so. I kind of, you know, started to live my life a little bit differently, you know, from when I was a rookie and, you know, sprinting in there to, you know, meeting starts at eight and it's 757 and you're sprinting from your, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I know you've probably been there when you were younger too, but, mm-hmm. you know, it, it is how, you know, learn how to, you know, be, you know, proficient and, you know, last in this league, you know what I mean? Um so I think, you know, I just attack it today and try and give it my all, you know, on the field and in meeting and in the meeting room, you know, and, you know, you just have to be attentive. You have to give it your all every day. You got to be the same person every day. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think that's what really, you know, helps helps out and helps you, you know, stay proficient in this league. Got you. No, that, that's an awesome answer. Um I wanted I wanted to ask you this. So you played for Vic Fangio. Yep. And now and now you're you're gonna be Nag you're gonna be with Nagy. I, I was coached by both of them. What do you see is what do you do you see some similarities between Vic and and Coach Nagy? And then uh, and what are some um, major differences? Two very different people. <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> um, Vic is a little more, you know, old schoolish. You know, no music at practice. No, no. what? Oh my god! Wow. Yes, yes. No music at practice. Like, like we literally like no team period. We'll have music like during stretch and warm up, but like after that, none. Cut off. It's it's whistle <clears throat> and pads hitting, and you know, people people going back and forth with each other. It, uh, there's nothing else. Like I was like, man, that was the toughest thing for me to get used to while he was our head coach out in Denver. Um, and that's kind of like the craziest thing for me to get used to, you know, as Nagy is the coach. Periods, this and that, like, you know, he's all about the energy. He's all about, you know, he's yeah, maybe he's just because he's a little bit younger and whatever, but, you know, maybe that's why. Um, but I just think they're two very different minded people, like in that aspect. Now they all want the same goal, you know, they want to win this and that, but, you know, Vic is a very hard no, like back in the day, you know, this is what we do. He was throwing on film from, you know, back when, when Vic looked crazy, it was on VHS. Like, <laughs> but, you know, Nagy is in, in a different, he's a newer school coach. And, you know, this is like, you know, it's kind of newer to him. Not not to say it's newer, but he's a newer head coach. And he's, a, I mean, Vic's just been coaching longer than him, period, you know. So it's right. definitely a different vibe being around the two. You know, and everything is just newer school, I'd say. Like, with, no, I, with, I hear you. With Maggie versus, uh, you know, Vic, which is more, you know, old old school type vibes. Yeah, no, I tell everyone if, if Bill Belichick was on one side of the spectrum and then, like, Pete Carroll was on the other side. So, Pete Carroll, I don't know if you know Iggy, Pete Carroll, like, that Seahawks culture, they played music videos when you get in the, when you get in the the meeting room, you get it. You get to wear hats. There's music blasting. There's a basketball hoop. Like total Jeez. fun atmosphere, but still get the work done. Um, and then you know, like um, like Bill Belichick and those Tom Coughlin's. Like Tom Coughlin, I remember he said, "I want everyone wearing the same color under undershirt, same socks, and same color, same color cleats. Like black cleats, damn white socks." And same undershirt, no music at practice either, and stuff like that. I would say Nagy is right in the middle to where because Nagy has that saying. I'm, I know you've seen it, but it's like be you, like be you within within the rules we have. Like turn up, be swaggy, like have fun, but do it in the framework um, that we have. Don't go outside it. And Vic is more like I don't I don't want to use militant, but it's it's so funny though. Cause Vic could be like that, but Vic has a sense of humor. It's dry, but it's still it's still a sense of humor. But just like Elijah said, like they both they both have the same goal and um and and they both mean well. It's just two different styles of um of coaching and, and stuff like that. But I feel like we're starting to get the new like parts part in the in the hair type of guys. Like you have the metal floors, you have the Cliff Kingsbury. Nagy don't have no yeah. hair, but it's still you still you still got the young the young hip guys and stuff like that. So I mean I kind of feel like 
that's where the um that's where the league is going, going, especially with the young quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, uh, Elijah, we're we're gonna run up against a little bit of time. I do. I have a fun football question. In your entire career, toughest guy you've had to block. Where you line up and you're like, God damn, like here he comes. Um, I'd probably say Von Miller. <laughs> I was gonna say you're in Denver. It's got to be him, right? Oh, no, wait, not no. yet. Hold on, wait, wait till Khalil go. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, even though we were on the same team and stuff like that, but man, he if he's going, he's going like you know, what I mean, um, does he really th- have that? Does he really have that motorcycle lean? Like they said, this man almost touching the uh, the grass. Yeah, like he he has crazy flexibility, um, almost like freakish. Um, but Khalil got the same thing, you know what I mean? But yeah. I was. I don't know. Maybe it's different because I was in game mode when we had played uh, Chicago, so I didn't really like know. But just being in that practice mode, that competitive, like you know, going at it in camp and this and that, you know, going against Vaughn was just, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's a tough dude to block. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's, I think he he was definitely one of the toughest for sure. That's awesome, Prince. Who's the hardest person for you to guard? I tell everybody, and, and I think you're gonna, you've experienced, or you're going to experience this too. It depends on the season because I feel like I get better. I've gotten better every year. So one time, I don't know if you remember the name Miles Austin, was tough for me one yeah. time. One, yep. one yeah. time, one time it was Antonio Brown. Another time it was Des Bryant and stuff like that. And then, but I think all time, and you're gonna see him too, Elijah Allen Robinson. A Rob is nasty. Like now, he's gonna give dudes problems. I mean, he hasn't been there yet, but but he's you know, it's he's nasty. And then um, Devonte Adams by far, like Devonte Adams with the Packers. Oh my gosh, <laughs> man! Both both of those both of those are And Cause I remember, I I mean, I followed like this. How old I am? Like I I had a shadow Megatron, Calvin Johnson. Cal- but Calvin Johnson, he wasn't as like as shifty, and I like to press. So him not being as shifty wasn't as wasn't as hard, but of course if you throw it up, like with Julio too, if you throw it up with those types of dudes, I mean it's it's tough. But yeah, Devontae and A Rob for sure. All right, boys, good stuff. Uh, Elijah, thank you, man. This is uh, we love talking to people. It was great to get your your perspective as as uh, we'll call it a younger a younger guy in the league versus guys that we've spoken to. Um, we appreciate your time, man. Wish you the best of luck. If there's any parting words, man, please, where, where people can find you, anything you want to say. Yeah, man, uh, I appreciate you guys having me on. It's always good to, you know, share my experiences, you know, from an undrafted outlook. Because, I mean, Prince, as you know, you know, being drafted first round and being drafted under undrafted is, is very different, you know. And they both have their pros and their cons. Um, right. But I think it's good to be able to share that experience because, a lot of people always think, oh, like, you know, he's in the league. You make this, you make a ton of money, like this and that, you know, it's, it's different. Like, you know, it, like you could make a ton of money and be drafted first round, or you could be undrafted and on practice squad making, you know, well, after tax, probably about 90K, which ain't nothing, you know, when you're trying to buy suits and this and that, you know, it, it's a very different, you know, atmosphere to be in. So just, just wearing with the white socks like Prince. <laughs> I'm always appreciative, you know, just to be able to share my experiences and, uh, you know, for the next guy. So when they when they're coming up, they could look and be, oh, okay, yeah, I seen him do it. Okay, me, I could do that. That's for sure, you know. So thank you guys so much, and I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, and um, and tell Al, I think you work with Ali at Athlete Relations. Elijah, yeah, yeah tell Ali, man. I, yep. I said what's up. Ali's Ali's is great people. Um, we we've, we've worked together before so yeah tell her i said what's up all right i got you and uh, elijah right. i got a little present on the way for you too bro oh you got something coming yeah i got a little so i got a little something for recovery for you too bro okay all right man white socks uh, i'll be sure to shout <laughs> out. Iggy, Iggy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. okay i'll be i'll be sure yeah, to yeah. Shout out, man all right boys i appreciate you guys all right man Thank all you, right man. see y'all